And we want to welcome you here to Bordeaux Field here at Turner's Falls High School. We are rolling out some Suburban League youth football here on the FCAT. I'm Bobby C. along with Chris Collins. And we're excited about our broadcast here today to be able to do this between our two local teams. We just had a game that just concluded that we had a chance to do earlier, which was our Pee Wees, where it was Frontier, a 19-6 winner over the Bulldogs. And now we're getting ready for the juniors as they are getting ready to start their game. And we're glad to be able to have it here on a beautiful Sunday afternoon here in Turner's Falls. Want to let you know that if you want to find out the schedule of the Bulldogs, you can go to their Facebook page. They play all their games here at Turner's Falls High School. This is only week number two of the early season for these guys. Also, if you want to be able to follow the Frontier Red Hawks program, you can do that as well. They play their games down at Frontier Regional High School, and they will be also having their schedule available if you want to check it out on their Facebook page. So once again, we're excited that you're here to be able to enjoy this broadcast that we have here. Want to thank Megan Self, and also want to thank the Ekman, Alec, Alec the Ek, we like to call him, and uh, it's wonderful to be able to have them along with me and Chris here on a beautiful Sunday here in Turner's Falls. They're just getting ready to kick things off. Want you to know the little rule difference from the last game we had. Uh, they don't do punting at the Pee Wee level, but you'll see punting happening here with the juniors. And if you look at the difference here in size between the kids that just played earlier, if you watched our other broadcast that we did compared to this one, it's really night and day. All right, we're ready to kick things off here. And kickoff goes to the Bulldogs. Ball carried on the play by the Bulldogs. And they will have the ball. First down and 10. From the 40, looks like the 46 yard line. Oh, they moved it back. So it'll be the 40, 44 yard line. Nice handoff there on, by the Bulldogs. Nice run right there. And a beautiful run right there. Brings up a first down for the Bulldogs. A really nice run right there. That was a 35 yard run. Gavin Arsenal, the quarterback, and he is down to the, looks like the six yard line. That's gonna bring up another Bulldogs first down. So it looks like it'll be first down and goal for the Bulldogs early in this one, Chris. Good quick, good quick start for the Franklin County Bulldogs. Yeah, nice run. And a big play right there by Arsenal being able to get away from that Frontier defender. Frontier's got a big defensive line, but the offensive line for the Bulldogs has done an excellent job being able to block these defenders, giving the Bulldogs a chance to get really good field position. Quarterback sneak. And I don't think there was a gain on that one. Nope. Nothing's moved. Oh, they got a fumble on the play. Whoa. Oh, recovered by the Red Hawks. Wow. 
That's a tough break for Franklin County. They were knocking on the door, their first score. And Arsenal ended up fumbling the ball on that play. So now it'll be first down and 10 for Frontier, Chris. And that was a huge defensive play by Frontier. They're playing with full field here, full 100 yard field. So it's gonna be a start from deep in front Frontier territory. We'll see if the Hawks can get something going here. Rolling out. Quick inside give on a counter run, it looked like. Gang tackle by Franklin County. We're gonna do our best here to be able to see these numbers here, folks. We're pretty far up. It's a gain of about five yards, it looks like. Maybe six. Second and four. Inside give again. Oh, nice job right there by the Bulldogs. Might have been Ted Sear on the carry. I'm trying to see through the number. And no gain, actually, maybe a loss of a half yard. Third and about five. Again, and they cut back the other way. And nice good job. pursuit by Franklin County. Hey, I'll tell you, Bulldogs doing a nice job on the defensive end here. After Frontier was able to make a nice job on getting a fumble, all of a sudden the Bulldogs are going to get the ball back here. Fourth I, down. I don't think they're going to go for it here on fourth and five. I wouldn't think. No, I think you're going to see a punt. But. I've seen other things happen, Chris, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't probably go for it right now with them being so close to the end zone. And they are. Wow. They are going for it. They're gonna pass it, and it's gonna be incomplete. There it is, a big stand right there by the Bulldogs. Not so sure about that coaching decision right there. I'm not so sure about that. I think if you're trying to keep, teach the kids some fundamentals here and being able to understand that there's certain positions in a game where you have to make a decision like that, this is not the time to do it early in this one. And this is now first and goal, it looks like. First and goal for the Bulldogs. It's almost like they took advantage of, a, of an opportunity with the fumble as like a reward, but I wouldn't have thought of it that way. I would have thought of it as, hey, we got to do what we can to try to get to the other end of the field. If we're not going to get there, then we need to punt the ball. And I'm very surprised with the coaching staff here at Frontier making that decision. First and goal. Pitch into the backfield. And brought down at about the eight yard line. Xavier Lackey, nice job right there. Being able to take that ball for the Bulldogs. And he had a nice gain on that play. That'll bring up a second down and goal and a timeout. I'm gonna talk it over. You know, you wouldn't have to take a timeout if you uh, punted the ball, Chris. I mean, <laughs> just trying to say, I mean, I just, like I said, I, I don't understand the coaching on that one. I just think that when you're trying to teach the kids fundamentals and you're at this age group, you want to be able to get those experience of those situations, Chris. And to take a gamble on going on a fourth down play at literally the 15 yard line on a full 100 yard field, 
it just didn't make any sense to me at One all. One thing we don't know is what kind of kicking game Frontier has. It may have That's his coaching true. staff may have felt it was safer to just go for it, but the pass was not going to go in any of those. Oh, absolutely things. not. Not a great pass. So, nope. second and goal for Franklin County. Running time on the clock. The clock is being kept on field. Hand off inside, and that's going to be a touchdown. And a nice job right there by the Bulldogs. They pick up a touchdown on the play. Nice job right there. Looks like number 30 ends up scoring. Brandon Dion. No, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Nehemiah Rice. Nehemiah Rice. Ends up the guy scoring the touchdown here for the Bulldogs. And they will now go for the extra point. How they do it here, Chris, is that if you run it in, you get one point. And if you pass, you get two. And they're set up in a split back formation. Double wing, one guy in motion. And they're going to roll out and throw it. And touchdown, two-point conversion is good. Yeah, beautiful pass right there from Gavin Arsenal into number 13, Devon Bala. And there you go, 8 nothing, Bulldogs. Nice and early here in this one. We'll bring it back up the field. Franklin County draws first blood, 8 nothing. You're watching Beauty League Football on Frontier Community Access Television. Franklin County on the board. Again, we got a, a, a bit of a break there when they got the ball deep in frontier territory when they decided to go for it on fourth down. And all it took was a couple of plays to put them in the end zone. Yeah, nice job right there by the Bulldogs. Great pursuit. I will say that when I first was looking at both these teams when they were coming onto the field, I noticed a huge size difference here between Frontier and the Bulldogs. But I will say that the kids that are in position here for the Bulldogs team, they've been able to contain their positions very well, Chris, and they look good. They really do. Bulldogs looking good here early in this one, here this afternoon. Franklin County will kick off from their own 40, as the Red Hawks would like to answer here if they can on this series. Kick, taken at about the 45, 42-yard line. by right, Frontier up the right sideline into Franklin County territory. They will spot it at about the 47 of Franklin County for Frontier's next series. Nice job right there by Nolan Safford. He ended up getting that ball for Frontier and gives them really good field position. Next, they spotted at the 49 of Franklin County. So they only have 49 yards to go to be able to pick up a touchdown and hopefully be able to tie this one back up. That's what Frontier is looking for here. With the Bulldogs hanging tough here, playing good defense, doing a nice job on the offensive end as well. Here come the Red Hawks. We've got a double wing formation, which is an, exactly one of the formations that the Frontier football, high school football team runs. We're gonna get it. And a counter run up the right side, and just about back to the original line. Ah, nice job right there by the Bulldogs on the defensive end. No gain, second and 10. We got a lady down on the field here, Chris. She's, she's ripping up the clapper, hey. Uh, <laughs> got the hand, the hand clapper thing yes. going on down there. Usually it's cowbells, but uh, right. no, they got the clapper Not available anymore. here. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Good, thank you. I love that. Back on the double wing for the Red Hawks. And the pitch goes this time to the left side. Cut back up in the middle and brought down at about the 46 yard line, so it came at about three and a half. Yeah, not a bad run, though. Number 21. For Teddy Frontier, Sear. Teddy Sear Teddy with a Sear. nice job. Yeah, Teddy Sear. Remember Teddy Sear last year? He yep. ended up having a big game in the game we did last year. That's we right. We mentioned Teddy a lot last year in that game that we ended up doing. And he seems to be their chief, chief backfield threat right now. And 
I believe that was the case last year at Frontier. Yeah, well, picked up four yards on that one, bringing up a third down and six. From the 46. And you know that if they went on fourth down and 85 yards to get to the pylon, they're definitely gonna go four times on this one. Pitch goes down to the right side, same formation. Good oh, cut what back. a cut wow, wow, he's gone. He is fast. See ya. Oh my goodness, that kid can fly. Number 24, should I Brantley? Wow, that kid was lightning coming out of the backfield. There was nobody from the Bulldogs that was gonna catch that kid. He was flying. 46 yard touchdown run. And all of a sudden, Chris, we got a 6-6 game here. Well, actually, it's an 8-6 game. They, they got the two-point conversion on the pass. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Eight, that's right. 8-6. Eight, eight, but Frontier can tie it up with a pass two-point conversion. Yep. And I'll tell you right now, that was lightning speed by Brantley. That's why that double wing is effective. It allows for a little bit of, of, a, of a separation on the line, and he just got a hole and took off. Same formation. Yeah, and they're going to try to throw the pass. Right in the Fire back of the end zone, no good. No good. Pass incomplete, so we'll come back up the field with the score. Franklin County 8 and Frontier 6. This is junior football. And it appears we've switched in, so I believe we're into the second quarter now. Again, these games are running time. And what they do is they run halves, Chris. They don't even do quarters, they just do two halves. I was able to learn that as well as we went through the, um, so they don't even have a quarter to get a break. They go first half, second half, and that's it. So run so is time. this the start of the second half, it looks like? Uh, uh, I'm not nope, sure. Nope, it's just the, just the kickoff from just the- Just switch hands, uh, okay. Yep, kickoff from the touchdown. All right, so Frontier will kick it off as they had the last score. Nice and drop down at about the 31 yard line, picked up by the Bulldogs, and they get a little bit of a seam and up to about the 43 yard line, which is where the Bulldogs will start the next series. And another nice job right there with a run back by number 30, Nehemiah Rice. Nehemiah has done a really nice job being able to see the field. Good return right there and giving the Bulldogs decent field position so they'll have the ball, Chris, first down and 10 from their own 43. Let's we'll see what the Bulldogs can do here. A couple of long runs here. I'll have a long touchdown run for, for Frontier in the last play, but there have been a couple of big breakers here from some speedy backfield players, both teams. Pretty disappointed that a lot of those uh, fans from the first game didn't stick around to watch the big kids play. You figure only being an hour game that they would have stuck around. Pitch into the backfield. Good cut back on the end. Still on his feet. Oh! Davion wow. Bell, all the way up past midfield by Davion Bell. Nice job right there. Excellent run and a tackle made on the play by number 57 from Frontier, which is Levy Picker. Devian Bell's got some moves out of the backfield. Now well, Coach, Coach Chris Arsenal must be very pleased with the way his team's playing right now. They really have done a nice job moving the ball, they played good defense as well, and very impressed with this Bulldogs team early here in this one. Ball at the Frontier 49, second and about two for the Bulldogs. And the inside give. Again, goes back to Davion Bell. He's still on his feet. First down yardage for the Bulldogs. Wow, that kid really sees the field well. And he's a little guy too, Chris. He's not very big. Well, they sent Neves in motion and they, they countered with the uh, cutback counter run and Bell Gets him down into Frontier territory at about the 34-yard line. I'll tell you right now, the kid can't weigh more than 80, 85 pounds. But boy, really quick on his feet. Does a great job being able to see the field as well. Absolutely. Very impressed, very impressed with that kid. I formation now. 
Rice is the tailback for Franklin County in motion. Goes Bell. And the rollout by the quarterback, Santiago. And he gets some yardage down the right sideline. First down yardage and finally brought down just inside the 16 yard line it looks like. Oh, big run right there by Gavin Arsenal, the quarterback here for the Bulldogs. Excellent job on that play. Boy, he was able to see the field well as well. So great job right there by Gavin. He's uh, coming over to talk to his dad. Trying to set up a play here. First down for the Bulldogs. Ball is spotted just inside the 20. Inside give, nice defense there. Brought down quickly by Frontier. Yeah, there was nothing going on right there. And the fans for the Bulldogs getting into it. They're gonna loss about a yard and a half, maybe two on that play. Yeah, that was Bell, and that time Frontier smelled that one out pretty good. And that's a loss, like you said, of about uh, two yard line, two, two yards in there. Ball just outside the 20. Shotgun. What a nice snap right there by the rolling, Bulldogs. Rolling right. Way to see the field, Gavin Arsenal. And another nice job right there by the quarterback for the Bulldogs. You know, the one thing that makes a quarterback good is when a quarterback can see the field. Looks like he got shooken up. He got a little pop there. Well, it's all part of the game here. Arsenal took a hit. He's going to be okay, though. He's up. So one thing that's gonna happen here when he gets into high school, being a little guy, being a quarterback, he's gonna have to really protect himself. Absolutely. And it's gonna bring up about a third and a long four for the Bulldogs on the quick timeout. As the coaching staff going over the next play. Probably getting close here to the uh, half. And I think that's why they're calling a timeout, making sure that they get this first down. Definitely two down territory here for the Bulldogs. One thing you worry about in a day like this, although it's not extremely hot, but there's always a chance of cramping. Absolutely. Uh, especially in these early September games when it's a little warmer than usual. You don't see cramps as much of an issue in later football schedules because it's colder and you're not as susceptible to, to ending, ending up with a cramp in your leg. But we haven't seen much of that today, which is a good thing. Yes. High formation again. Nehemiah Rice is the tailback. And Neves in the up back position. And they fake the handoff, and it's going to be a sack. Oh, nice job right there. It's by not number 22. Not enough time to, to pass. No, but a nice job right there by R.J. Kaczynski. He was able to get in on the play. And Lockin definitely was broken down on that play. There was no way that Arsenal had any chance to be able to do anything with that play. It's coming up fourth and 11, so that's a loss of a good six or seven yards. Coach Arsenal coming back to the sideline saying offense didn't block. Well, that's true. That's exactly why Frontier was able to get in on Gavin Arsenal in that play. In motion again, pitch goes to Bell. Bell cuts back, cuts outside, and he's gonna be brought down well ahead of the line of scrimmage. So a turnover on downs, and Frontier will get the ball back. Well, a very nice job right there by Frontier to be able to contain the run 
and they will take over the ball. Nice job right there by number 44 of Frontier, Garrett Dredge, whose uh, father is Scott Dredge and one of the coaches of this team. Coach Dredge is right out there, matter of fact, talking to the quarterback right now. As we all know, Coach Dredge was the former varsity coach of Frontier football until he took an administrative job and they ended up turning the job over to Coach Gordon, who has been the coach for the past few years since Coach Scott Dredge has uh, taken on that new administration job over at Frontier. Although Dredge was on the staff last year, I'm not sure if he's still on the staff at yeah, Frontier. Yeah, but he was definitely the head coach for a long time. He was. Double wing offense now for the Red Hawks. Whistle, and I think somebody jumped. That's what they call a blow and throw, and it usually indicates that someone on the line moved. Want to let people know that uh, there is uh, Gabriella Duda is a female who plays for this Frontier Juniors team. And I've been seeing her out there. She's been getting a lot of playing time. So if you're looking out and you're able to see, you'll be able to see her out on the field. And she is one of the females. First and 15 for the Frontier Red Hawks. And the pitch goes left side. And able to break a couple of tackles, but get back a little, a little ahead of the line of scrimmage, not that much. Maybe a couple of yard gain there. And that'll bring up a second down and looks like probably 12, Chris. Second yeah. down and 12 for Frontier. Again, the score is Franklin County eight, Frontier six. Frontier with the ball. Deep in their own end, trying to get something going here late in the first half. Inside give, big pile, not much there. And that's gonna bring up a third down and looks like no gain, so it'll be third and 12 here, Chris. We'll have to see what happens if the Bulldogs end up holding them here on what Frontier will do. It's a big third down play here for Frontier. Frontier Bulldog dog cheerleaders trying to get their team pumped up. Third and 12. Roll out to the right. Oh, Sack. what a play right there by the Bulldogs. Looks like the Bulldogs number 45 on that play, Chris. And it's a number that I do not see. Actually, it might have been Nieves. Okay. 42 that got 42? in there. Yeah, All right. Pretty sure. Well, it's a big play right there. Now you get that fourth down and long here for Frontier. We know what happened last time when they <laughs> ended up not, they elected to not pump the ball. And when they were held, that's when the Bulldogs ended up scoring a touchdown. Well, this is almost virtually the same field position as that last exchange when they had fourth and long and they tried to pass. Exactly. Like so Franklin County knows what to do here. I, I, I think you gotta, if not pass it, throw it way downfield or find a way to get it out of there. You don't wanna give these guys another shot at first and goal. Exactly. Let's see what, what Frontier does here. Let's see if somebody goes back. Wow, they must not have a punter on this team. I, I, that's my that guess. That is what I'm guessing. They have nobody who can punt the ball. Yep. Fourth and long, and they're going to go for it. Inside handoff, cut back up. 
And not going to get the first down, but it got way out of dodge. Ooh, you know what? That is going to be a that's going to be a call against the Bulldogs, and I think it is going to bring up a first down. I think they're going to get the ball on that personal. Yep. I think it's going to be a, yep, horse collar. Oh. Yep. So with that horse collar, that's going to bring that ball ahead another 15. So Frontier will keep it. So they got out of the backfield without having a punt. And a penalty gets them all the way up to the 39-yard line. Wow. Not only do they get the ball almost at the 40, but now that was a huge momentum shift right there as the Bulldogs had a huge opportunity for great field position, Chris. Now a fresh set of downs here for Frontier. So Red Hawks back in business, double wing formation. It's been their primary setup. It's gonna be an inside give, but not oh, that time. Oh, big tackle right there. Oh, you go nowhere. I'll tell you right now, Big number 55, D'Angelo Brown comes in with a big play for the Bulldogs. And that was a loss of four yards on the play. Puts it back to about the 36. He just went in there strong. Oh, that was a great job getting in there on that play by Brown. Again, inside give. Coming back left side. And not going anywhere far. Knocks back about a yard from the line of scrimmage. Good job right there by the Bulldogs to be able to make that tackle. There's your first half. The end of the first half is the Franklin County Bulldogs eight, the Front of Red Hawks six. We're back to second half match next. This is Junior League Football. Front of the Red Hawks. Second half action upcoming here. The Franklin County Bulldogs and the Frontier Red Hawks junior level play here. And the Franklin County Bulldogs uh, started off strong with an eight yard run for a touchdown by Nehemiah Rice. And the Bala pass was complete to make it eight nothing. And then Brantley with a 46 yard run for Frontier made it eight six and the run failed. So that's where we are, eight six in favor of Frontier with Franklin County kicking off to start the second half. Well, a nice job right here by the Frontier team that's really uh, was able to get themselves back into it. But the one thing that we can say about this Bulldogs team is except for that big play, they have really done a nice job on really both sides of the ball. And right now, Frontier has an opportunity to get the ball. But the thing is we need to tell people is, is that they do not have a kicking game Frontier at all. Not even a person who can punt the ball. And the kickoff goes to about the 35 yard line where it's caught. And running back all the way down the left sideline. Still on his feet is the return man and brought down. Oh no, he's still on his feet. Wow, look at the speed on him. Now they bring him down at about the 30 yard line of Franklin County. So good run back for Frontier. And that looks like it's number 21. That was Teddy Sear. Teddy Sear with a nice job on that return giving Frontier excellent field position to kick off the second half here in this one. So Teddy Sear, excellent job right there by him. Brings up a first down and 10 for Frontier, and that'll be at the Bulldogs, 32 yard line. Great run back. Yeah, Teddy Sear. He's got quick speed. Double wing set again for Frontier. And pitch goes left side and a trip up in the backfield. And it looks like about a loss of one, maybe two yards. Yeah, Teddy's here. Nowhere to go on that one. Good defense right there by the Bulldogs. 
and they ended up losing a yard on that, so it'll be second down and 11 for Frontier. Yeah, loss of a yard. Good pursuit again, Franklin County Bulldogs in the backfield. Very, very quickly. I think that Franklin County might be a little bit quicker on the line, although Frontier has a size advantage. Well, I gotta say, that size advantage did come in handy there, especially on the kickoff return by Teddy Sear. And the pitch goes, and again, good penetration, but he's able to cut back and go back the other way. Teddy Sear can take that corner. He's gonna be into the end zone for a touchdown. And a beautiful cutback right there by Teddy Sear of Frontier. Excellent job to be able to contain that end. He went for it and with his speed, there was no way they were gonna catch him and he picked up the Frontier touchdown. About a 32 yard touchdown run. With the extra point upcoming. And that'll bring up a Extra point conversion once again here, folks. If they end up passing the ball and it is complete, they get two points. If it's a run in and they do get the conversion, it's one point. And it's 12 8 Frontier. And they're going to roll out and pass for the two point conversion. Incomplete. We got a good game here, Chris. So we'll come back up the field with the score Frontier 14, Franklin County 6. This is junior football on Frontier Community Access Television. 12 8? Yeah, 12 8. I'm sorry, 12 8. Yeah, 12 8. Yeah, because uh, they ended up. You're right. The, they had the two point conversion and went up 8 0. And then, yep, so it's 12 8. All right, here we go. 3, 2, 1. One correction, I had the wrong score. It's now 12 to 8. As the two point conversion failed, the touchdown was six points. So thank you, Bob, for catching that. So 12 8 Frontier. So Franklin County very much still in this game. And they will receive the kickoff. see what kind of a return game the Bulldogs have here in this one. Beautiful boot. Whoa. That was an excellent boot right there by Frontier. Nehemiah Rice with a beautiful return. Nehemiah is still on his feet up the right sideline. Breaking tackles into Frontier territory down at about the 40. Nice one. Wow, run beautiful return right there by Nehemiah Rice. He has got the wheels, man. Between him and Teddy Sear, two gentlemen in the backfield for each team being able to do a really nice job. So Franklin County is inside the Frontier 40 at about the 38, which is where they will start this series. Again, they're trailing 12 to eight. First and ten. Two wide outs to the near side. And motion goes out and goes out. And it passes complete. A swing pass out of the backfield. Good cutback. Down oh. the right sideline. Gerard. That's Brody Gerard. And he is gonna be into the end zone. Brody Gerard. Did he get there? Oh, where is he? At the one yard line? Looks like they caught him right before he got in. Wow, what a beautiful play right there. The little guy. Brody Gerard with a swing Gerard pass. Brody Gerard with a nice cutback too. And that brings up a first down and goal for the Bulldogs. Literally, Chris, right out about the one and a half yard line. First and goal, Brody Gerard with a swing pass out of the backfield. Again, great uh, little, little bit of trickery there, good move. First and goal from the one. All right, here we go. What a great back and forth game we have here. Yes, indeed. Come on, come on, come on, come on. 
Inside give. And it's good. Two point conversion is good. I'm oh, sorry, that's the touchdown, yep. excuse me. And, uh, that was ended up. Yep, he ends up with the touchdown. So now, all of a sudden, Chris, we got ourselves a 14-12 game here. 14-12. Conversion upcoming here. That's the big two points if they can get it. Yep. One thing we do know is, is that there is no kicking game here for Frontier at all, so there's not even a way they could even be able to come through with a shot through the uprights here. Whistle. Oh, that hurt right there. That means that they got to literally go from seven yards out. Yep, legal procedure is the call. It was an illegal shift, one of the two. Arsenal comes back to get the play from the coach. I'll tell you right now, Arsenal's had a really easy time being able to roll out, Chris. Yeah. Maybe you roll out on this play and you just try to get one of your tight ends. Maybe you have the line pinch a little, bring your tight end out as a nice flare and have your quarterback roll out. Good opportunity for a two-point pass here. It's gonna be tough to run seven yards out. Chris. Let's see what happens. Arsenal now. The motion goes knees. That's exactly what he's going to do. And there's your end. Oh, he could not handle it. So the pass is incomplete. Come back up the field with the score now. Franklin County 14. Frontier 12. This is Junior League football. And Frontier is the action television. And the Bulldogs are going to kick it away. They're going to kick it about 10 yards. Frontier will fall on it. Good field position at their own 43. All right, so here we go. Really close game here. We are in the second half with the Bulldogs, 14-12. A lot of big plays in this game, Chris. A lot of big runs by both teams. And very good field position here for Frontier as they will have the ball first down and 10 from their own, 47. 47, you're right, I'm sorry, I, thought I said 43, it's 47. So right near midfield. So we'll see what the Bulldogs defense can do. Backfield, nowhere to go, brought down. Good pursuit. Tried to do a little trickery on that play. It didn't work out though. And that's because big number 55, D'Angelo Brown was right there in the middle and he wasn't gonna let that happen. And he took that frontier player, brought him right down to the ground. It might have been Sear on the, on the play that got tackled. Yeah, they tried to do a little trickery on that yep. play and it didn't work out. Loss of two, second and 12 from the 45. Pitch goes <clears throat> on the inside, and again, nowhere to go. Oh, excellent job right there by the Bulldogs. And that play right there by was, was by number 33, and that is Messiah Dandy. And Dandy picks up the tackle on the play, brings up a third down and 11 here for Frontier. Nolan Saffer was the ball carrier. So good defensive stand here for the Franklin County Bulldogs as they would love to make a stop here and then go in and punch one more in. And they fake the pitch, actually they hand, the quarterback keeps it. This is Garrett Dodge. And he's brought down at about midfield. You know, 
Well, that was a really nice play right there by Dredge. Dredge, I'm sorry. The ball back to Dredge, and he ended up literally being able to try to contain, but he got popped. He's a little uh, shaken up here. He got hit pretty, pretty hard. Honestly, he's heading over. He's hurt. I couldn't tell if it was a broken play or it looked like it was going to be an inside give, and then Dredge kept it. Yeah, and he, he got the wind knocked out of him. He got it up to about midfield, about the 50-yard line or so. He's bending right over to the side here. He, he, got, he got hit pretty hard. Be fourth at a log seven. As we said, there is no kicking game here for Frontier, so they're going for it. Pitch goes to Sear. Sear stiff arms the defender. He's way back and deep in his own territory. But he cuts back up the left side and gets a first down. What an explosive run that was. What a great run right there by Teddy Sear. He literally took something that was nothing and turned it into a first down and more as Frontier. That's a big play. There's a Frontier player down behind the, the play. Looks like it's Safford. Yep. Nolan Safford. And so what? I'm a, little, I'm a little confused here. Maybe he didn't make it. Looks like it's a first down for Franklin County. Yeah, did they call him? Did they, maybe they called him out of bounds before the. It's um, possible. Because we couldn't see all the way on the other side of the field. It sure looked like he got the first down yardage, but whatever. It's going to be, yeah. it looks like, uh, first down for Franklin County. Unless I'm misreading this. No, because they are bringing out their offense. So great run by Sear, but didn't quite make the first down, it looks like. So it's first down for Franklin County. And that's an offside. It looked like the wide out on the near side ran left too early. Five yards will tacked against Franklin County for that. So first and 15 from the 40. For the Bulldogs. Hanging on to a slim two point lead here, the Bulldogs, 14 12. Out of the shotgun, inside give. Goes to the up back. Nehemiah Rice again. Rice cuts back the other way. He's got first down yardage and more. Can he outrun everybody? And he's brought down inside the 30 on a nice tackle. Good pursuit there by Dredge, who is still. Comes up lean, lame. I think that left leg, you might have a cramp. Yeah, he's, he's definitely, uh, he, he was hurting before too. That's a huge run by Rice, and it's a first down for the Bulldogs into Frontier Territory at about the 29 yard line. Solid game here today by Teddy Sear for Frontier, and what about Nehemiah Rice? He is having a wonderful day here for the Bulldogs. Got to give credit where credit's due, though, yeah. Chris. Offensive line's done a nice job for the Bulldogs. Absolutely. Opening up some really nice holes for Nehemiah Rice. First and 10 from the 39 of Frontier. Rice gets the give out of the tailback slot. I could have fit through that hole. Yeah, that was a nicely, <laughs> nicely set up run. Yeah, absolutely. Another nice run right there by Rice. And yes, that offensive line for the Bulldogs has done an awesome job here today. Got to give credit where credit's due that they have done excellent work being able to contain those defenders from Frontier. That was a nine yard game, brings up second and short from the 20. Gerard checks into the game. I think Gerard may be running the offense right now. I tell you, that kid's quick. He's real quick. I wouldn't know anything about quick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. We'll have to see what they got in store here. Could be using Gerard as a decoy as well. And Arsenal is going for it here. He's got nowhere to go. Let's see if he got forward momentum. Yeah, great job right there by Teddy Sear. 
I think he got it. And it looks like he got the first down. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't have much, maybe half a yard to get there. Yep. Now, quick timeout as the two teams talk it over. It's going to be first down inside the 20 for the Bulldogs. I just want to say one thing, that if anybody says that size matters in the game of football, I'm literally watching some of these kids that are out on the field here today that have been really good ball players for their teams. And they're not very big kids. Right. They got a lot of courage. They also have very good smarts too. You know, the one thing I've watched when I was watching Brody being able to go number two here for the Bulldogs, and also watching a guy like Teddy Sear, they're small kids, but they see the field really well, Chris. Yep. Their vision, and that's what's gonna protect them to be able to not get hurt, you know? Having that vision is very important, especially when you're a small guy. And also, you're you're learning from the fundamentally some very sound football being played out there. Not a lot of penalties, a couple here and there, but nothing like last year. We had like, we had like procedure penalties, like four of them in a row. That hasn't happened at the junior level this no, year. It's been really great. I've really noticed a lot of improvement. And I will say this also, that you can tell that both of these teams are very well coached. Right. And that's really good to see as well. I didn't realize at the beginning of the game that Frontier didn't have any kind of a uh, kicking game at all. But I figured with a coach like Scott Dredge, you would know that there's got to be a reason why he didn't. Inside give. That's going to be another touchdown, it looks like. Yeah, Nehemiah no. Rice is on fire. Nehemiah Rice. 20 to 12 here, Chris. You know what that means, don't you? Whether it's a one-pointer or a two-pointer, means that Frontier is going to have to score two times. This is a big play right here for the Bulldogs because this could cause Frontier to have to score twice to be able to pull off this victory because right now we're sitting at 20 to 12. Extra point upcoming. We'll see what happens here. So this is a big conversion for the Bulldogs. Whether they end up going for one or two, the most important thing I think that Chris Arsenal is looking for is just being able to get at least one point. They need to convert this to cause Frontier to score twice. Ah, it's going to set him back. Yeah. Just like the last time. Flag down. That's going to cost him another five. So now, like we talked about the last time, Chris, He's going to have to roll out, and he's going to have to try to look for a tight end. He almost made it last time, but yep. just couldn't quite hang on, hang on to the ball, the receiver. And now you're going to end up seeing Arsenal roll out. He rolled out to the right side the last time. We'll see if he rolls out to the right this time. And he does. He's still looking for somebody. And a good job right there by Frontier. Good defense. And Arsenal had nowhere to go. And that will give Frontier the ball, but they're down eight. Yep, 20 to 12 with the Franklin County Bulldogs with the lead as we come back up for the next series. So it was a great pursuit, just nobody open. And he scrambled as much as he could, but it wasn't going to happen. And they'll be kicking it off to Frontier. Remember last time, Teddy Shear was able to get that kickoff, Chris. Yeah, well, you don't want to just give up, yeah. just give up a big, uh, a big uh, kickoff return for a touchdown. Here. No, absolutely not. But that would almost keep it away from Shear. I'd squib it or you know, kick it toward the sideline. So we are, we are in a very important part of this game, especially. If you're Frontier, you're down eight, which means that all you gotta do is score and pick up that two-point conversion, and we'll have a tie game here. Let's see how well they do here on the kickoff. Bulldog ticking away, and like I said, squib. Didn't quite go 10 yards. I'll tell you what, though, I'll take the ball any day now, as I got the ball first down and 10 from the 49. That's a good field position right there yeah, is. for Frontier. So can the Red Hawks mount the comeback and get this game tied? 
as we are again into the second half. Running time, time being kept on the field, so we can't tell you how much time is on the clock. The only thing we can tell you, folks, is that this is a big offensive series right here for Frontier. And if you notice that they're going to start taking timeouts, that's when we know that we're getting close to the end of this one. All right, here we go. Double wing set up for Frontier. And handoff up the, up the gut. Gets maybe three yards to 34, up to about 45. And Dredge ends up getting a couple here. That will bring up a second down and six. Yeah, we're gonna check on a player. It looks like somebody might be shaking up on the, brick, on the bulldog side of the wall. The only thing I don't like is he's holding that shoulder in his hand. And get the EMT crew here. She's gonna take a look at him. I don't like when a kid holds his hand like that. That's yeah, not good. Especially in the wrist area. Hey, let's get that ball, defense! Yeah, we love it! Ooh, ooh. We love it! Yeah, we love it! Yeah, we love it! 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 Can't tell the number because it's... Uh, that might be Gerard. No, it's not. It's uh, no, Gavin it's Arsenal. It's Arsenal. In pursuit again by Franklin County. Oh, nice job right there. Good defense. Excellent job by Dandy on that play. Yep, D'Angelo Brown was in there as well. A couple of big guys doing a nice job there. That'll bring up third and nine. All the way back up to the 47. Set again. And Brantley is in the left slot. In the inside give, going nowhere. So Franklin County's defense standing strong here. They are. Boy, what a big stand right now. Now you know that they can't punt the ball. So if you hold them here, you're going to have good field position. Thing is, is your quarterback is now sitting on a bench. And he is not looking good at this moment. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened in that, in that defensive exchange, but he was holding his arm when he was coming on. Yeah, and with you, you know, with him being a quarterback and holding his arm, that's not a good sign for Gavin Arsenal. We'll have to see whether he's going to be going in if the Bulldogs end up holding him here, if they're going to end up having to bring in someone else. Fourth and nine. It's a very big play right here for Frontier. They need a touchdown. Outside! And the handoff goes. Oh, excellent job right there by the Bulldogs. Yeah, Brantley and, tried to cut back and yeah, had a hole but there. Dandy but. did an awesome job at making that play. I tell you, that play by Dandy right there was huge. And now the Bulldogs will have the ball. The question is, can Arsenal get back out there? He's still in a lot of pain. He's, he's holding going, that arm. He's going back out. Well, you know the old saying, sometimes you got to suck it up. Well, Arsenal's going to suck it up here. Funny thing is, you don't see a kid go back in like that with an arm injury very often at this level or any level, even in high school. Normally, they would take him out, but he says he's okay and yep. may have just jammed a finger. Who knows what happened? Yeah, let me tell you, when you jam a finger, it hurts. And yes. It's very painful. But as long as the way I look at it is, is our, our medic here today said that it was okay for him to get back in. So it's all good, right? High formation, in motion, goes Bala. And fumble, uh, and I think Frontier got it. That exchange right there did not work out well for the Bulldogs. And now Frontier picking up a very big turnover.
That's a big turnover That's right there. It's a big one. First and 10 for the 49. Yeah, and you know, like I said, we're sitting here at a 20 to 12 game. It's only an eight point game, which means that one touchdown in a two point conversion and Frontier is able to tie this one up. Not sure that there's a lot of time left in this one though, Chris. Yeah, we, again, the time being kept on the field, we're having a, an operating clock, so we can't tell you for sure what the time is left, but it also is running time, so Frontier, if they're gonna make a move, they wanna make it right now. Exactly. First and 10, double wing formation, and the handoff goes inside. And great pursuit again by Frontier. Well done. I'll tell you, the Bulldogs have done a really nice job. Yeah, I'll tell you, that, I've been very impressed with the Franklin County Bulldog defensive line. Yeah, they have been huge here today. Another person's down. You're going to see some fatigue, I think, here, and maybe, yeah. maybe some heat. Got a kid all shook up here for the Bulldogs. That is uh, Xavier Lackey, it looks like, coming off. Yeah. Oh, he's all right. I'm sorry, that's not Lackey, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's Neves. Neves, yep. It's a big loss if he's off the field for a while. Yeah, he's a good player. And looks like his ankle. Ankle or knee, one of the two. I'm betting it's a cramp. You think it's a cramp? I think. You know what? You might be right, Chris. Yeah, I think they're working. If it's if yeah. it's not a cramp, it's an ankle. Oh, that what a, a play sack. right there! Wow, that was a great play. Is is that Dandy again? It number thirty, number thirty for Nehemiah Rice. What a great play that is right there, bringing up a third down and very long. We have another injured player. I think Neves is going to go back in the game. It looks like it. I think he might just have been cramped up. You know, I'm frankly surprised there hasn't been more of that today. Yeah. Well, you know, they're they're filling the kids are filling the water bottles over there. Right. Get these kids to get hydrated here. Well, Neves is back in, so Neves and Arsenal both dinged up, both back in the game. And it looks like. Players up. He's, so the, I'll tell you, Dredge has had a really tough time. He's yes. really hurt and all. He's really had a rough game, and um, I think that he's just keep getting that reoccurring injury, yeah. and it just keeps getting worse. And now he he's off the field. Third and very long at the 38-yard line of Frank of Frontier. Third and 23. Wow, that's going to be tough. Right. But I've watched some big plays here today, Chris. That's right. They could break it with one play. Flag. I don't know if this is coming back, but right now it's down the left sideline. Teddy, Teddy Sear. But I think this is coming back. I think we got a hold, Bob. We do. We got a hold against Frontier because that flag came out early. And that is too bad because the play of holding against Frontier just cost them an opportunity at tying this game up. Wow. Then again, look at the hole that Teddy Sear had, and he was able to go all the way. Poor Teddy Sear, he's like, wow. Plus it cost him 10 yards too. So now you got third down and 33. <laughs> oh wow. man. I mean, you think about it. We're sitting here looking at where the where the third down marker is, and you look where the first down is, and it's a long way away. Tough break for Teddy Sear, though, as he did a great job getting around that end. That could have been a game changer, but. Yeah. Wow, third down and 33, Chris. Peace. Well, they still got two downs to be able to get that first down. Maybe you can try to get half of it back if you can. Here. This might very well be the ball game. And we have no idea how much time is on the clock, but. They oh, that's a great job right there. Excellent defense right there by number 55, D'Angelo Brown. He was able to get right in there 
on defense. Another player is down. We didn't see what happened, but it does look like a player is down. And it looks like Dandy. Man. Dandy ended up going down. Yeah, it might be a cramp. He's running off on his own. Yeah. Yeah, he's probably all cramped up. Fourth and very long. So the story of this drive has been the Franklin County Bulldog D. Oh, yeah. They're going to punt. Oh, wow. Apparently they can punt. And it'll come, it'll drop down at the 45. So that was a good punt. It was a good punt. So they had a punt draw all along. Wow. Well, we didn't we didn't see him in the first half. So. We did not, but well, we saw him there though. And now they got to play good defense here. We know what happened last time, Chris. The exchange didn't work out well for the Bulldogs, and Frontier ended up recovering to get that ball back. But time is ticking away for the Red Hawks here in this one if they want to have a chance to either tie or even have a chance to be able to get into that extra frame so that they can be able to continue this game into extra we overtime. So Franklin County has the ball at their own 45 yard line, first and 10, clock is in motion, and they have a 20 to 12 lead. The chance to ice it away here if they can score. And off the tailback, and he gets stopped at about the 50 yard line. Still not a bad run back though by Bala. He did a nice job. He's had a good game today too. Him and Nehemiah Rice have done an excellent job for the Bulldogs. And there you go. That picks up a nice five yards, almost six on that. So that'll be second down and five for the Bulldogs. At exactly midfield, 50 yard line. Like I said, time is ticking away in this one. Two minute warning. Just got the two minute warning. Two minute here, warning. So we just got the two minute warning here. So two minutes left in this one. And it's real, a real two minutes because it's running time. Yep. High formation, one up, ah, whistle. Illegal procedure. I think maybe Gerard went too early. I'm not sure. Or someone on the line jumped, one of the two. That negates the run. We're back to second and 10. And Arsenal is going to keep it, running up the right sideline. And he's going to knock out of bounds at about the 45 of Frontier. Should stop the clock. Oh, I don't know if they stop the clock for out of bounds. I'll tell you right now, if I'm Coach Arsenal, you know what I'm looking for right now? I'm looking for that first down. Yep. I want that first down right now, because if I can get that first down, we can keep the clock running with, with the run and force Frontier to have to use their timeouts. Third one, and that's the first down. That's secured. And that's Neves out of bounds. So they will move the chains. First and 10 for Franklin County. And the clock is running. Like we said, it's a real two minutes. So, Bulldogs are taking their time. The clock is running here in this one. Ball spotted at about the 36 yard line, 37. Really good ball game here, Chris, between yeah. these two teams. Very entertaining. A nice job right there by the Bulldogs to pick up that huge, crucial first down. 
Pitch goes to the left side. Bala. And he wants to stay in bounds. You don't want him to go out of bounds. And a huge, huge first down right there by the Bulldogs. And I think they secured this one, Chris. Davian Bala down the left sideline and they are into frontier territory just outside the 11 it looks like. Yeah, clocks continue to run here. Looks like a secured victory here for the Bulldogs. A very good game and very entertaining between these two teams. And they still have another possibility here to score. Timeout Franklin County. I'm really surprised he called the timeout. I mean, you, you had the clock going and I mean, I don't, unless, you, why, you could even kneel now and make Unless them use I was their thinking. timeouts. Kneel. You, there's no need for you to be running the ball anymore now. You've, got, you've taken so much time off that clock. There's no need for them to be able to just kneel. Just take a kneel. Let them use their timeouts, Frontier. Because all it takes is a pickup of a fumble or an interception or anything that goes down for a turnover can turn into a run back and Frontier is right back in this game. This is, this is really where you gotta really utilize your coaching skills to be able to make the right decision for your kids. Yep, they're running trips to the right. I, I, I'd, be, I'd be just taking the ball and just kneeling on it. The handoff goes to the right side. And Damian on the corner is the end. Just caught just inside the five. Yep. Looks like Franklin County wants to punch one in. I know, it just seems like they're running up to the line to want to punch it in instead of just trying to run the game. It's almost like they look like they're playing from behind right. instead of leading in this one. That's it. And that's game, Chris. Final score from Bordeaux Field at Turner's Falls High School. The Franklin County Bulldogs 20, the Frontier Red Hawks 12. Thank my broadcast partner, Bobby C. Alex Eckler, Megan Self, and the crew here, also the executive producer of Frontier Sports, Kevin Murphy, and Chris Collins, saying so long, and uh, we'll catch you next time on Frontier Community Access Television.